There have been some reports of fighting in Tripoli. Have you seen that or been able to get any confirmation of that? Yes, well, there, there have been reports of... La last night, there was uh, some incidents in parts of Tripoli which were then seem to have been quite rapidly dealt with by, by the people here and by the Libyan government. So then um, people started to come out into the streets to rally in support of their leader, essentially. And then after that, there were um, a few more incidents. It appears as though there have been a few snipers um, from the rebels uh, shooting from buildings, which obviously this is a very, I'm talking about a very small number of rebels, but the issue of snipers shooting from buildings, what it does is it creates mass panic and it's very difficult for the Libyan police, the Libyan army and the armed volunteers volunteers here to deal with because of the threat of um, hurting civilians. So it's clear, as I was saying in um, my report last night, that this is all part of the strategy to create mass panic and mass confusion here uh, at, because NATO has obviously failed in its military strategy and to create a military solution here. So instead what we're seeing is a massive psychological operation going on to try and weaken the government, the Libyan government in that way. But um, behind me, life is continuing as normal now again in Tripoli. The situation seems to, ha seems to have stabilised you know, within a matter of hours, effectively. Well, the rebels are saying they're advancing towards Tripoli. Are people in the city worried that they might be caught in a bloodbath, or do you think, do they think that rebels will be pushed back? Well, you know, we've been hearing from the rebels and from NATO that the NATO's allies, essentially the rebels, uh, are a day, a week or very close to Tripoli. We've been hearing this for the past five months. So the people of Tripoli have essentially got used to these claims and don't treat them very seriously. Uh, we've been hearing that Zawiya is under control, that Brega is in contr under control. But the reality is, is that what is happening in these areas is that they're coming under intense NATO bombardment. Um, leaving the Libyan army and the volunteers, essentially the armed tribes and armed people in Libya, to move out of the area temporarily while the airstrikes are taking place. And then once the airstrikes subside, then the Libyan army and people move back in to resecure the area. So the question is, is how does NATO expect these rebels uh, on the ground to maintain any, um, maintain any so-called capture of an area if they, they are so dependent on NATO bombing and obviously lack any kind of popular support to secure these towns and cities it's clear that they are not able to do so and the minute that NATO leaves this country then uh, then the, the two sides of the conflict can sit down and negotiate as the Libyan government has been calling to calling for and the only obstacle to that the, that diplomatic solution at the moment is the foreign intervention of the US France and Britain and the other NATO states and the Persian Gulf states do you think NATO's mission in, uh, will be prolonged after September? Do you think we might see airstrikes continuing after September? Well, there is, of course, the possibility. I mean, there is a United Nations General Assembly uh, meeting on September the 19th where it appears as though they are going to call for a resolution to suspend the bombing. But as we know in the past, NATO has not respected the United Nations in Iraq, in Israel or anywhere else. So there is the likelihood that, that, that they will. The, NATO is in a real dilemma now because, as I said, they have failed to secure a military solution. Um, uh, but, th but then, obviously, as we know, the United States, France and Britain, the arrogance of these, cu these countries, they can never just admit that, like in Afghanistan, like in Iraq and elsewhere, that they got it wrong. They expected to secure victory within a couple of weeks. They have been un unable to do so, and this is because of the popular support of the Libyan government here. And so the, they are in a, in a dilemma now where they can't just back down. They need to find a way to, uh, to an exit strategy, essentially. That's what they need. But... Um, they, they need some kind of w way out, some way to save face, because it's a highly embarrassing situation for them. Uh, after almost 10 years in Afghanistan, and now they're losing the Taliban that are killing their soldiers uh, by the dozen almost on a daily basis now. They're really in a big mess. But of course, in Libya also, one of the reasons why they're so desperate to s secure some kind of perception of vi victory through these psychological, uh, this psychological operational campaign of confusion through 
through the media is of course because they are pushing for intervention in Syria and how can they justify to the Security Council and the international community intervention in Syria when they have so abysmally failed in securing any of their aims in Libya and let's remember that of course their aim in Libya was supposedly to protect civilians and we have seen that they are murdering civilians here in their thousands uh, and of course now the irony in London uh, that human rights uh, groups are condemning the British government for their, uh, their arrest and their treatment of those who stood up against the British government during the so-called riots. So really the, the British government and the Western states should, should take uh, the advice of the leaders of the global south and focus on their own troubles back at home rather than creating mess and more mess in countries like Libya and Syria. All right, Lizzie Phelan, thank you so much. Reporting live from the Libyan capital, that was independent journalist Lizzie Phelan.